Monkeys and Typewriters Darwin's theory of evolution has a simplicity that is appealing. One of his contemporaries summarized it in a single phrase. Evolution, he said, is the survival of the fittest. The theory is widely accepted by scientists today. However, some people object to evolution on religious grounds and some on scientific grounds. Though it is the minority view in scientific circles, critics of evolution raise some interesting points. Here are a few. It is difficult, some believe, to the point of impossibility, for life to arise from non-life, even if all necessary ingredients were mixed in abundance. Though some doubt he meant it, Darwin apparently did not believe life developed from non-life. He attributed the first living thing to a creator. Nevertheless, life developing from non-life has become part of evolutionary theory. English scientist Thomas Huxley suggested time and chance caused the first life. He reportedly said six monkeys typing mindlessly for millions of years could write all the books in the British Museum. By the same random method, he said, simple life could be created. But in his recent book, The Philosophical Scientists, British scientist David Foster says this is unlikely. Allowing Huxley all the monkeys there have ever been, typing for all the time there has ever been, there would be a shortfall ratio of more than 100 million millions, and that only relates to the chance of typing one line of one book in the British Museum. That evolution causes minor changes is virtually beyond dispute. But some scientists, including Darwin's contemporary, French anatomist Georges Cuvier, don't believe it can cause major changes. This is because living beings are complex mechanisms, and a change to one part of the mechanism affects other parts. Compare life to an automobile. You can change the paint or flare the fenders somewhat without problem. But, for example, if you change the size of a piston even a bit, other parts of the engine must be changed to accommodate it. That such coordinated changes should take place by chance, at the same time, in the same living being, strikes some as extremely unlikely. Darwin said, occasional small changes make some animals better able to survive. Conversely, detrimental changes make them less likely to survive. But some anatomical changes would appear detrimental unless in fully functioning form. Consider the bat, whose wing bones are essentially its fingers. If bats evolved from non-flying creatures, wouldn't the increasing length of these animals' fingers make them very clumsy and likely to be somebody's lunch long before the fingers became wings? The fossil record doesn't show gradual changes. Darwin said big biological changes result from eons of little changes. Some in his day, such as anatomist Sir Richard Owen, who coined the word dinosaur, said the fossils didn't show little changes adding up to big changes. Many believed more study would close these gaps, but it hasn't. Some scientists have proposed a theory called punctuated evolution, in which species remain stable for ages, then isolated groups rapidly change from environmental pressure. Rapid change means there would be few intermediate species, which would explain the gaps in the fossil record. However, it also requires squeezing a vast number of changes into a relatively short time, which strikes some, including traditional Darwinists, as unlikely. Studies show that life forms that look similar are often genetically similar. Apes and humans, for example. However, critics say genetic material does not show the progression that evolution demands. For example, most scientists believe jawless fish evolved into bony fish, which evolved into amphibians, then to reptiles, and finally to mammals. This means genetic material should become increasingly different as you move from jawless fish to mammals. But it doesn't, they say. In fact, the genetic material of bony fish, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals is about equally different from jawless fish and from each other. For animals that evolved away from each other rapidly at some point in the very distant past, however, current genetic sequencing techniques may not be sensitive enough to detect these differences. 
While the critics of evolution hold a minority view, their objections suggest that the question is not fully resolved. Thank <laughs> you.